All right, guys, uh, let's get started. So hopefully today in the lecture, we're going to finish up RSA. Just kind of, um, we started this last Tuesday, I believe. We went over some of the math, you know, the background of how to, how the RSA algorithm works, right? And then on Thursday, we went over some of the code. Um, and then we're going to finish that up on Thursday. And just today, we're just going to do more problems, basically, to kind of get a feel for what's going on and really finish that and then uh, get into how to break RSA, right? So if you remember, we are currently on week nine and you're going to have your practical sometime around week 12, right? And also exam two at week 12, right? So Tuesday and Thursday. So that Thursday, you know, you have the lab and basically I'll, as I said, I'll hide a message and you have to find it, right? So today we're going to do an exercise that I think should be very helpful for that, all right? This is not obviously that practical exam. It's more of a exercise in class, but it's, it's, I think it'll be fun, right? So I just did it this afternoon and I, I liked it. <laughs> so I thought it was fun. So I think you'll be able to um, do it and get a feel for how it works, okay? So uh, you will, for this exercise, you will use uh, code, right? Because as you know, our, you know, it's difficult to compute things by hand with for RSA. It's really big numbers. You know, you, you can't just do it with the calculator. So you'll have to use Python. You'll do the two scripts that you learned about last week um, to solve the problem, all right? So, you know, hope, hopefully shouldn't take long to do, and uh, I'll leave it for the end of class today, right? So just to kind of do that exercise. All right, so um, yeah, so let's continue with the description. So I'll do a kind of a summary of RSA. Right, on, you know, just, and then we'll do a problem or two. And then that should be everything. So let me just do kind of a general summary. So as you know, for RSA, step one, right? So you're gonna change color. I can't do that. Oh. They have changed this. All right, so step one, uh, select P and Q, right? P and Q, and these are prime numbers. So we saw in the code, you know, basically you use uh, a program, a function to generate the prime numbers. So randomly and independently select two prime numbers where P not equal to Q, right? Uh, but then we calculate N, which is um, P times Q, right? We also calculate phi, which is P minus one, Q minus one, okay? When we do this, then we have to select an E, one less than E less than phi, right? Today, we're gonna look at this one, the GCD. I introduced this concept uh, last week, sorry. I introduced this concept last week, right, GCD. And so today we're gonna do just an, a few examples of how it would work basically, but this is something that is not practical to do by hand either. So I'm not gonna, you know, I'm just gonna show you how it works. And then as you know, we solve this with uh, a function. All right, and then once we have uh, E, then we have also D and that's gonna be the, so this should be five. And that would be D times E mod B equal one, right? So we talked about this one as well. And that gives you E and D. Remember, we also saw this, um, you know, in, with Python uh, on Thursday, we had that function, the in, inverse function, remember? That's gonna be critical for today, okay? What does that in? in function give you, it gives you the D, right? So basically it looks at this relationship uh, and it gives you the D, okay? All right, so once we have these uh, parameters solved, then we've got the public and the private key. So remember this one as well. 
you know, you can make a cheat sheet and just write this stuff down because breaking RSA requires uh, understanding how this uh, works out. And as I said, it requires doing the, using all the programs that you have available, right? So then we know that this is E comma N and this is D comma N, okay? And then finally, once we have these, you make available the public key, right? And the private key, you keep a secret. And in particular, this is the thing that you keep a secret. We know that D is much bigger than E. So we know that, that's kind of a relationship. You've seen that. I'll still do some examples um, next week of some coding where we're gonna look at actual, with OpenSSL basically, RSA. So that's kind of what I'm saving for next week is, you know, right now we're doing Python. Next week we'll do OpenSSL and we'll play with that. All right, so we have our public and our private key. And then, uh, and it's, as we have noticed, um, E is usually actually just number 65537, okay? Because this number is, you know, meets the conditions um, that allow you to basically for RSA to work. So usually E can be this number. And then N obviously is the number you're gonna calculate based on the two prime numbers. All right, then we know, and this is also important for today's quiz, you know, you have mod, or sorry, M to the E modulus, so I'll say mod N, right? So that's important. Um, so this is pretty important. I mean, a lot of this RSA is really the same idea. We're just playing with it. I think breaking it is actually how a lot of this might click in, in your head, you know, because it's really interesting. All right, and then um, we also have for the message, it's going to be C to the D mod N. Oops. Whoop. Right. Okay, so that's um, that's basically the the approach. Okay, and this is just I just wanted to summarize this again. We did some exercises last week. We went over the code. I describe what GCD is, the greatest common divisor. So we went over that. It's the longest positive integer that divides each of two integers. We also went over what the mod operation is. So we've covered that already and you can refer back to the previous lecture. All right, so today then, I'm just gonna kind of do another exercise. I kind of emphasize this a little bit more. Um, so RSA steps, right? So we've described that. You have that. And today we're talking also a little bit about how to break breaking RSA. So last week we talked about how to, if we have a one-time pad, the OTP, right? Um, how to break that if we have two ciphers, right? So we went over that. Um, and so we kind of did an exercise. Today we're doing a similar thing, but with RSA. And but this one, of course, as I said, requires code basically, and actually it requires a supercomputer which in this case will be a website called factordb.com. So you can just assume that's your quantum computer or your supercomputer or whatever it is. If you had that magical device, you know, you'd break all of RSA. So if for small prime numbers, we can break it, right? As you will see. So the trick is that they need to be very big. So breaking RSA, right? So that's the idea. Okay, so RSA's main security foundation relies upon the fact that given two large prime numbers, the composite uh, N is generated and it's easy to generate, but it is very difficult from N to get P and Q, okay? So basically it means that this is easy, right? Going from P and Q to N is easy but it is very hard or impossible hard to go from N and get P and Q, okay? That's not something that you can do. The way that you people do this is through something called factorization. And we'll take a, a little bit, talk a little bit about this today as well, show an example of it. And that's what you will do in your quiz today, okay? 
So you'll be doing that in your quiz. So from N, it is not possible to get P and Q. At least it is not known. I mean, it could be that somebody has done it, or if somebody has a powerful enough computer, you know, somebody may have a quantum computer already. All right, so there's that. Um, so if you break RSA, now you should understand that if you break RSA by getting P and Q from N, then you can use it to calculate everything, right? So if we go back to here, right? So let's think about the logic. Well, if you have, you have N, then if you have N, um, you cannot compute phi, for instance. And if you don't have phi, you can't get E. And if you don't have E, you can't get D, right? So in phi, if you don't have phi, any. E. So, because you will have E. So, but the problem is getting this P and Q. Now, it should be obvious to you that if you have N and you're able to get P and Q, then you plug it in here, you get phi, you get phi, you got E, and then you can calculate D. Does that make sense? So that's the basis of this. So in the quiz today, I will give you a cipher. That's the fun of it. So, I mean, I, I'm just looking for one answer. And that's the message. You got to give me that message. All right. So you got to. <clears throat> yes, please. OK, so it's a quiz day and not participation. It's a participation. Oh. But there will be a practical, which is not participation. So this is to help you prepare for that. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. So this one is still participation, uh, but still do a good job, right? Pay, you know, concentrate on everything. And I the 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 practical is on week twelve, and it's not just RSA. RSA is just to get a key that will then be used for symmetric encryption, AES or something, and then you get the message. And I may throw in integrity and all you know all kinds of things, right? So you got to understand everything that we've covered in the semester, and then if you understand all of it in ten minutes, you can break it. And I'll give you all the code. So I'm not going to ask you to write from scratch code, but you do, you obviously need to change values here and there. And that's what you'll kind of practice today. Okay, makes sense? Yeah, so today's uh, practice, uh, exercise is just finding one number. So I, you just need to give me one number that I've hidden um, and I'm giving you the cipher basically. All right, so um, yeah, so we've, okay, so now what we're going to practice. Just real quick is um, we're gonna practice getting the GCD. How is that cal calculated? Okay, so we're gonna do that. Now, what you have to understand is we do these things of GCD with certain numbers so that all the math holds, right? The math only holds in certain conditions for certain numbers. And so that's why you have to do all these checks. Like you have to make sure they're prime numbers and they're within one and E and they're what is called co-prime or, or whatever. All those are so that if you're following those rules, everything will work out in the math and then you'll be able to use RSA. Okay. All right. So we're the best way to do this is just to do an exercise. So we're going to do a couple of exercises. Um, and then, like I said, you know, just kind of practice. But it should be pretty easy. All right, so RSA example. This is just so that we practice. So the goal for this is just to practice the GCD. Get a feel for that work, how that works. Keep in mind, all of this is already done in the code that you played with on Thursday. So let's do the example, select two prime numbers, P and Q. So that's P, 11, Q, 13, right? Okay. Um, then you calculate N. And that's going to be P times Q equal 11 times 13. And that's going to be 143. Okay. Then we're going to do phi. And so phi is going to be P minus one, Q minus one, 10 times 12. And so that gives you 120. 
So now we've got a number, right? We've got a number of phi, 120, and this is the number that we're going to use in the GCD calculation to select our E. So this is what the algorithm would need to do that we've automated, right? So remember, so phi is 120, and we're going to use that. So I'm going to move over here, and now in step four, we would have to select an E. But we do this kind of in a where we evaluate several values, right? So for instance, you know, we're gonna start at let's say three less than 120. Cause we would assume that E would start at three. We wouldn't make it one actually, right? So th the numbers are usually like three, five, seven, but they're kind of small numbers. So we set 65,000, right? All right, so, but, it, but this is just so we can do the math and, and kind of understand how it works. So then what do we do? We need to check the GCD of this. So GCD is the common greatest divisor, right? Which we defined oops, sorry. as the, the largest positive integer that divides each of the two integers, okay? So then we do E comma 120, and this should be equal to one. Okay, that's the idea. That's basically what the function is doing in your code. Okay, so we can try, for instance, uh, so let's say the condition of E equal five, right? You see that? So then GCD here of five comma 120 is what? Five. Five, very good. So five, right? Yes. And is that one? No. So it does not meet the condition. You see that? That's basically it. So it's just saying I can't use, use five for this based on five, right? But you would need to do these computations. So let's just do a couple more just kind of to uh, illustrate further. So let's say E equals three. I don't know why I can't make this red. I don't know. Change the color. Ah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> they changed it and I'm used to the other way. Thank you. All right, great. So you can do GCD 3 comma 120. All right, and the same thing. What is the GCD of this one? Three. Three, yes, very good. So it's not one either, so it's discarded. You see, so it's almost like the algorithm would discard these. And now let's just do one where it should meet the condition. So E equals seven. Um, so this should be GCD seven comma 120. And that is equal to one actually. So there you go. That's why I kept saying it's gotta be within the range but also meet certain conditions such as GCD. Does that make sense guys? And so this would assure that the algorithm is solid. So then now you've got your E. Now on the exam, I could give you something like this, but I'm not big on like these things, right? It's more interesting to me that you guys understand the algorithm, the code, et cetera. But, you know, could be there, right? So just make, put it in your cheat sheet. And that's it. So now you've got your E, all right? So now you've got your E, you've got your N, right? Which I believe was 143 and then you would calculate D. Calculating D is not straightforward, right? So the, for that, we had that other function, but this assures that we can perform that equation that we had defined before, somewhere in here, right? This equation here, because now we have E, we have phi and one, so we can solve for D, right? Now you would have to exhaustively try numbers or we have the function. This calculation is a little bit more involved. So I'm, I mean, if you're interested, I can give you as a, an aside material, but otherwise we're just gonna use the function in our second script, okay? Remember that's the in function that we did on Thursday. We've already, I returned D in that case. All right, so that basically does it. So then uh, let's say D is 103, so we have it just to complete this exercise, because maybe this one could be on the exam. So then like, we would use, now if you notice in the code, to solve, oops, sorry, to solve for D, 
we say that we use something called the extended extended Euclidean algorithm. And that was also in the code. So that was in there, that algorithm implemented from scratch. Again, I'm not going to go into so much depth, but if you wanted to understand how it works, the code is there. So using that algorithm, D would be equal to 103 for this problem. And so then you could prove this by doing, um, I think it's 103 times E, which is seven, right? Mod uh, phi, right? Let's go back. Yeah, mod phi. So that would be 120 equal one. Does that make sense? Because we said phi was uh, 120. Okay, so then we already did this one. I'll just do it again. Uh, 103 times seven. It's like 721, correct? 21, I'll use the Python uh, operator. And now you can see this is actually just doing 721 divided by 120. That should be six. Gives you 720 over here, minus one and, you know, one as well. So that's it. That's your solution for D and that's what you would get, okay? Now, remember, just as a hint, in the exercise and in the practical exam, probably the best tool that you have for finding D is the in function in that code, which I've already shown to you how to, how to use it. Questions? Perfect. Now let's just uh, wrap it up. So then obviously what I'm doing in the quiz is I'm giving you the cipher. You need to get uh, the plain text. I've used bigger numbers for this. So like you would not be able to compute these by hand, but they're small enough that we can, so I have to find like a balance where they're big, but also small enough that factor DB will break them. If it's really large, factor DB cannot break it, okay? I'll, if it could, then, you know, every, you know, nothing would work. All right, so let's finish this one. So M is nine. So we're gonna encrypt, so that's gonna be your cipher, M to the E mod N. You will have to perform these operations you can just use the first script. That was pretty easy. Like, you know, remember the first uh, was just C equal M asterisk asterisk. I'll, I'll write it here, uh, but you can just use those. It, it should work because I haven't actually shown you how to encrypt and decrypt with the second script, but I did show you how to do that with the first script. So you can just use that. So here, uh, so basically you would do C in Python, Let's say this is M. So this would be, I used the parentheses, asterisk, asterisk, E, percentage N should give you the C, okay? And so if we do this by hand, uh, it would be C nine. So M, M is nine. Asterisk, asterisk, seven, mod 143. And that should give you 48. So this is what I would give you. Um, and then you just have to return M. So that would be then C to the D mod N, which in Python would be M C asterisk asterisk D percentage n, which is exactly what I gave you in the first script. Okay, but you can just type this in in the terminal, type Python, the, the Python interpreter would work. All right, so if we solve this one, so this would be 48, right? And then asterisk, asterisk, what is D? 103. Yeah. So D would be 103 percentage 
143. And that should give you nine, which gives you back the every text message. Any questions? That's basically the quiz, right? So the or the what we're gonna do today. Um so you'll need to use these equations, but the trick is you're not gonna have D. I'm not giving you that. What I will give you what did I do? is this. I will give you this one, the pub. Because that's available to everyone, right? So that's the public key. I'm going to give you that. And then you have to figure out the rest. Got it? Any questions? Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to do another one more exercise. And then we're gonna look a little bit at RS at factorization. And then I think we should be able to do it. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, let me create a new. This is kind of more interesting. Um, Let's say that we had a longer message. So I'm just going to illustrate how do you take like a longer message and and encrypt the longer message. Okay. All right, the longer message. Um, yeah. So we did one with 11 and 13. Now, remember, as I said, RSA is not really for encrypting messages or movies or anything like that. It's just for encrypting what? The secret key, right? That you would use in your symmetric key encryption. So let's do another one here. So we'll do exercise two. And then this message will be a little bit longer though. Okay. So our, So let's suppose... Uh, we want to encrypt the message. So let's say RSA uh, example two. Now in the second script that I gave you, I provided some helper functions. So it takes a string, converts it to numbers, and it does it for you, okay? So all that's taken care of. Uh, but here, I just wanna show you a little bit more detail. So now your message is bigger. It's something like 688. 232, 687, 966, 688. So there's no spaces, right? So it's one single thing. Imagine this is like the key that you're using, et cetera. This is what you want to encrypt. So what you can do is you can break this into blocks, basically. I was intentionally breaking it into blocks of three. So you can see I'm just doing something like this. Do you guys see that? So I've broken it into blocks of three. So we're going to encrypt them individually, basically. So assume, for instance, you have like here. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to put the steps anymore, but just the variables. So we'd have P47, Q71. These are still pretty small numbers. Um, so it makes more sense to use bigger numbers for the exercise. So then N would be... 47 times 71, right? And that's three, 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 seven. So three, you know, 33, three, 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 seven. Phi will be 46 times 70, right? And that should be three, two, two, zero. Okay, so this I'm just showing something interesting about um, what happens with encryption here. Okay, uh, so then you know we would follow the, the code of functions and we would get, let's say, e 
equal 79. So for this problem, and using our, um, the equation for D, we or the inverse function, we would get 1019. Again, notice D is much bigger than E. Okay. So now, you know, if this, of course, would be give you your public and private key, which would be 79, 1019. And what else? We got the public and the private key, and I'm missing a term here. What is it? And yes, very good. So that's three 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 seven, right? Okay, very good. Yes, perfect. Okay, all right. So then, uh, to do the encryption now, given that number, we would proceed. So I'll, I'll do this in the next page. We would do. We, I, I broke it into blocks of three, right? So it's 688 to the 79. I'll use percentage instead, Python. 337, and that's equal to 1570. And you'll notice something very interesting that happens here. If you're using this idea of block size, the block size increases, okay? And in, in a consistent way. So for instance, the next number was 232, right? So then we're going to do 232, 79, mod 33, oh, sorry, this should be 3337. And this one is 2756. So again, four digits. So you can see this consistency. So Let's do the other three. So 687 to the 79 mod 3337. And that's going to be 2714. Then, oops, 96679 mod 3337. And that's Oops. Two two seven six, and finally the last one six eight eight seventy nine mod three 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 seven equals one five seven zero. You guys see that? So that's basically the approach. So you can see now the message, the cipher has become. bigger. So we can write this, the encrypted cipher text becomes 157027, this is a cipher, 2756 or 2714 for 2276 or and 15704, but that's your cipher. Notice it becomes consistent. So note that each block of three digit plane becomes a block of four digit cipher text. Okay. And then of course, I'm not gonna repeat the, the process for decryption. I'll let you guys do it on your own. You should be able to do it, but to get it back, right? If this is five, 1570, right? Now we are going to get the plain text message. Right, so we're going for M, right? So that would be then 1570 to the Y. One thousand nineteen. Yes. Exactly. See, it's it's straightforward. One thousand nineteen. And then I'll use the percentage mod three three. Three, seven, and that gives you 688, eight, which is basically the plain text that we had before, just like that. So I'll let you guys fill in the, the oh, I'll just do like the last one, which is the same actually. 1570, 1019, 
percentage 3337, 688. Questions, observations, comments? Okay, so, okay. Now this is important and you've seen this already in the code. Um, 512, so if you remember when you created the, the prime numbers on Thursday, we I told you to try different numbers, right? I think start at 256. For me to be, for me to create the quiz today, I use 16, not even 256 or 512 or anything like that. So I wanna emphasize that the quiz is like, an initial seed value of just 16, I think it was. If I use 512, you know, it, it just, it's harder, right? So, so 512 is no longer considered secure, although in practice, in practice, it may still be effective. Um, currently, many implementations may choose a seed value of 1024 or 248 or even 4096. Okay, so that, um, but even 4096 today with computers, you know, like very powerful computers can be broken. I mean, might be broken, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Supercomputer, all right, got it. So yeah, so that's actually, I think today when you try to get one of the numbers, it'll take a while. So just be patient, okay? It might take you one to two minutes, all right. All right, so anyway, so just comparison. So now we haven't done this exercise, this lab we haven't done yet. We'll do it uh, probably next next Thursday. This is the performance lab. And, and once we get in more advanced things like digital signatures, but you, will, you should notice that our RSA is slower than uh, something like DES or AES. Okay, so either one, DES or AS. So this just means asymmetric versus symmetric. So the speed when you're talking about DES may be 100. So DES is 100 times faster than RSA. So DES is 100 times, oops, it's, it's much faster. So it's 100 times faster than RSA. So this is why, and, it, and since we've determined that symmetric can be secure, right? As long as we have a long enough key, then this is why you prefer to use symmetric for the actual encryption of confidentiality and RSA just for exchanging the key. Okay, so those two things happen in OpenSSL and they're very important. Got it? Yeah, any questions? All right. All right, so now we're talk we're gonna talk fine, you know, a little bit about um, breaking RSA. So that's the factorization part, just so I can give you this idea of factor DB and what that does, okay? So that's what we're going to talk about. Hmm. All right. So Let's move to a new slide here and then how to break, how to crack RSA, right? So this is what this is. So how to, how to break, crack RSA. So basically, as I think I mentioned before, cryptography is not about obscuring your algorithms or it's not about like, you know, making some highly elaborate algorithm every year. Instead, it's about the foundations of all of this, right? That as long as you keep the key secret, even though people know the algorithms in detail, they still cannot break it, okay? And in fact, you want experts to constantly try to break the, or sorry, constantly try yeah, to, to break these, to prove that they're good. 
So for many years, so RSA was developed like in the 70s, if you remember, right? So in the 1970s, right, is when it was developed. And since then, they had what is called the RSA conference. And it's basically a thing where people would try and break it with all kinds of techniques, right? And and they, you know, they haven't been able, to, it is not known that it has been broken yet. Basically, the, the main idea is factorization and simply comes down to n, okay? That parameter, because n is made up of p times q, so you want to find a way of getting p and q from n. Now, what you guys will do, and you should write this down in your cheat sheet, is you will just use something called factordb.com. You can just go there. I'll show you an exercise uh, in the next exercise of how to use it, and it's pretty straightforward. And then, you know, so I'll use it obviously with a separate uh, problem, not the one that I'm going to give you in the quiz. Okay, so um, so as you know, then. Why n? Because n is available in the public key. So e comma n is right there, right? And so you can grab that n and try to break it, basically. Now, what does factorization mean? You know this, of course. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6. That's what factorization is, basically. So these are factors. Okay. So for instance, if you have 12, right, then 12 is going to be what? 2 times 2 times 3, right? And that's basically factorization is, you know, trying those out, um, you know. So for instance, if I, you know, I could ask, you know, if someone asked you, and I'm sure you did this in school, what are the factors of 48? Right, so then what would you do? You did probably something like, well, it's eight times six, right? And then you would do something like, and this is four times two, this is three times two, and then this is two times two, okay? Right, and so that would give you the factors of 48, which is gonna be two times two times two, times two times three. It's, that's it. I mean, this is super trivial, I know, but I just wanted to kind of like show show it to you, even though it's obvious, okay? So obviously I'm not gonna ask you to do this, but you're gonna use factor DB to find those values. Got it? Perfect. So before we start the quiz, um, I wanna do an exercise where, I, where we actually use factor DB. Um, just to calculate some numbers. And, and then from there, I'll just assign it and you can work on it for the rest of the class. Okay. And then maybe at the end, I'll, I'll solve it myself and, and just show and, you know, how it works. All right. So let's take another problem. One, one problem uh, for using factor DB. So I, I wrote this down here. So in, in this example, you would have... Um, I want to show you why you have to use the code, okay? So let's say that, what would you have? You would have the public key, right? That's available. So there's no question about that. And so then the public key in this exercise is going to be E and N, right? N is available. And let's say it is 41, 5, 6, 7. You see that? That's N. You got it. So you can start writing down things. You also know E, correct? 17. Okay, perfect. But you don't know private, the private, right? Unfortunately. What do you know about the private? That it's bigger than 17. You do know that. D is bigger than 17. Do you know this part of the private key? No. Yes, very good. It's 41, 5, 6, 7, right? So you do have that. Okay, good. Now you do know, now the thing that you would have is, let's say that you intercepted this. You have like, uh, you tap the line or whatever, and you intercepted the cipher. This is meant to be the cipher. 
and it's going to be 12992. You do have that. You captured it. But what do you want? You want M. You see that? That's what you want. Now, you know how to calculate it, right? M should be C to the D. I'll use the percentage. N. Think about it. You have almost all the parameters, right? You have M. C is 12,992. I'm going to use Python here. So percentage. Oh, sorry. Asterisk, asterisk. Unfortunately, you don't have D, right? That's the whole trick. Do have mod and you have 41, 5, 6, 7. Got it? So you got these. So you don't have D. So you need to figure out how to compute D from N. Now, what is N? You know it's P and Q. And you know that from the algorithm that we defined at the very beginning, right? If you have P and Q, you, you already have N, so you don't care about that. But now you want to calculate phi. And then you use the functions, the GCD and everything. And you get E. And then with this relationship, you get D. Now, computing this by hand is very difficult. But as I said, the in function in the second script that I gave you get, returns D. Returns D. Okay. Got it? Clear? All right. So that's the trick is that's how you can get D. And that script already works because we did it on Thursday. So then now what we need is... Uh, we need to go to factor db. Oh, yeah, I do have her. I have p and q. Um, so let's go. Right, I haven't written. So what I need is from n, I need p and q. I need this. Okay. So then uh, now uh, we're going to go to n is. Three, one, five, six, seven. Okay. So let's open up the web. Factor db.com. There it is. So this is factor db.com. Okay, guys. Everyone got this URL? And so now what we plug in here is what? 41, 5, 6, 7. You see that? That's it. And factorize. That's your supercomputer right there. Okay? So you just assume you have this. You're the NSA or whomever. You punch it into your computer and you get those two values. 197 and 211. Done. Okay? So... I will close this site. Okay, but basically you can see 4157 equals 197 times 211. All right, so now um, we go back over here. So now we've got P and Q. So I go over here, 197, 211. You see that? You have factorized, factorized the N, and that basically means now you can start computing everything and get D. Now, by hand, that's not straightforward, right? And that's where the, the, the two Python scripts I gave you will do the heavy lifting for you. Questions? Feel ready for the exercise? Awesome. All right, so let's do the exercise. Um, so I don't need to record this part, right? So I'm going to stop the recording at this point. Uh, so 